Oh. I'm actually like stumbling around. I think we're very dehydrated as well. Oh man, that was tough. 20k we did. And it's so hot, it's like 32 degrees. Amy's foot's like essentially broken. So let's get you up to date. The previous few days have been tough. We hiked out of Petra, heading south on our final 180 kilometers to Aqaba. We were immediately thrown back in at the deep end. It is desolate and dry and rugged terrain. Very hot, very little water up here. But as always, Jordan rewarded the struggle. We found a small amphitheater that would seat 500 people. This is 2,000 years old as well, so it's uh, <clears throat> first century uh, AD, they reckon. I'd love to know what the average life of a person was who sat here. This goes to show how like impermanent things are, and how transient culture and society is constantly moving and changing and disappearing. The impermanence of life is getting deep now. There's just nothing here anymore. We dragged ourselves forward, mile after mile, punished by the Arabian heat. Wednesday today, so we need to text um, Abu, the guy who's dropping off our water, and just like make sure he knows to come tomorrow. So we don't die, basically. We were shocked when the path led us to an oasis in an area we were told there's no water. It saved us from the heat. It looks really beautiful. I can't believe so it. so excited. Yeah. Oh, yes. Look at the color of it. Beautiful green color. We could, Amy just said we couldn't ask for anything more. Like, so nice. it's so hot. I can't explain how hot it is. We're just we're so exhausted because it's so hot. Yeah. It's been really taking it out of us, and I think we might have been getting heat stroke a little bit, don't you think? Did you hit your butt? I should have jumped in a deep butt. <laughs> As arranged, Abu came to drop off our water. We could have called him off after we found the oasis, but the money is his income, so it wouldn't have been fair. Plus, he brought us a whole world of chocolate. Scorching sun punished us all day. We see shoes everywhere. I don't, we don't get it. Like, why? Who's losing their shoe out here? And how are they getting out of here without their shoes on? It's all rocky. I don't get it. Why are there shoes everywhere? We decided that the next day we would get up before dawn to hike in the cool morning. It is 4.45. And we're going to this time not get bloody heat exhaustion. So we are just moving at an absolute pace this morning, trying to beat the sun. The environment continued to be harsh and unforgiving. So here we are, completely f***ed. I was like stumbling around trying to find firewood a minute ago. I managed to drag this back. It's like a big piece of ginger. <laughs> yeah. Whatever that is. That was a tough day. So as you know, we have survived almost exclusively off hummus, stale pita bread, and dry tuna. But we also have noodles. We're heading towards a Wadi Rum. So there may not be, there may not be a lot more wood where we're going. And so even though I'm tired, even though my feet hurt, even though I'm only just rehydrated myself, I'm gonna put in that effort to make noodles. It'll make, it's a hot meal as well. It'll make us feel a bit happier, a bit better. More than anything, I need to make it, take advantage of the fact that if I don't do it now, there may not be an opportunity to do it later, which means we'll use all of our pita bread and all of our hummus and all of our tuna up, and then we might even have to eat dry 
five minute noodles without cooking it. So I'm gonna go to a special effort. You have to do this. You have to just push, push, push when you have opportunities like this, even if you're tired. Here they have the noodles. And they are going to come along nicely. I learned from Ray Mears actually. Look how much little fire I have. You don't need, oh f a bit of ash went in. You don't need a lot of fire. So that wood you saw earlier, is that's the only wood I've used to do this. It's probably not, a, you notice there's not a huge amount of water in there, but that's because we don't want to waste water. It's been a bit interesting because it's very windy though, which has added a layer of complication, but the little wind break that I've got here has helped a little bit, but it also reflects the heat back from the fire to the pot. So again, you're just optimizing that amount of wood that's being used. Not my tricks, Ray Mears. How are you doing? Okay. Not having too much fun, are we? It's just a bit tough. And your foot hurts. Yeah, we'll be okay tomorrow. I'm so tired. Yeah. I'm gonna eat this and go to bed, to be eat honest. Eat this, go to bed. Yeah. I might just check out now, actually, to be Maybe we'll sign out now. Alright. See you tomorrow. <laughs> Good morning viewers, uh, it has just gone 4am, uh, the wind is hot and I thought that like desert terrain was supposed to be like cold at night but it's definitely not been uh, our experience out here. Uh, the stars are out but obviously you can probably see the moon behind me. But yeah, I'm glad we got up because it's already roasting isn't it? It's is going to be so hot as soon as the sun comes up. When between the gusts of wind. There's just not even a sound. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing we do hear, which is very strange, I don't know if someone can tell us what this is maybe, is uh, we hear a low rumble. Uh, it was a loud one this morning, did you hear it? Yeah, we it think... It actually woke me up around, I think that's what woke me up at 2 a.m. Okay, now I'm scared. <laughs> no, I'm joking, but we think it's rock falls. We thought, oh, could it be a mine? But we're only 50 kilometers from Petra, there's no way they'd be mining this close to Petra. But I mean, we hear them like half a dozen times a day. Like, it's almost like thunder. One yesterday was like thunder. Yeah, it actually scared me. Yeah. It made me jump yesterday <laughs> yeah, when she heard it. So yeah, really weird. Not sure what that is. Dawn is coming. And we have sunlight. Good morning. Ooh. <laughs> Don't fall off the edge. That would be a bad morning <clears throat> if I fell off the edge. That would hurt. It is beautiful. It's already so, that, so hard. I'm dripping with sweat already. Look at that thing in the middle. Yeah. The wind's just like wrapped around it over time. Very cliffy this morning, which meant we were quite slow in the dark. We, we were like, let's not go quick and walk off the edge of a cliff. We couldn't see a thing. That's uh, not what you want early in the morning. Whatever. Or ever. <laughs> or ever. <laughs> Our bodies are tired. We've been doing this for weeks now and uh, we keep stumbling a little bit at the moment. Just be really careful of this terrain because if you fall and break a leg here, you wouldn't have to fall very far. I'm guessing it's not easy to extract us out of here. I'm inside an abandoned Bedouin tent. It's interesting, you can see down there is a little fireplace. It's very spacious. These are just propped up against the soil, nothing, they're not buried in. And it's got this canvas layer. Interesting. 
interesting they drive metal tent pegs I guess and I guess just the pressure of the two sides keeps these sticks up so you don't have to put them into the ground I'm kind of debating what to do tomorrow is 26k but it's in a flash flood zone so we kind of want to just make it to the recommended camp, which is also next to some water, which would be awesome. Um, it's not reliable water, but you know, whatever. The problem is that with that is it's, it's uh, 11K into tomorrow out of 26K. We're just wondering if we've got it in us. We've still got 5K to go for today. I know I said yesterday, I don't want to walk in the sun anymore. I mean, God, we got up at 3.30 this morning and it hasn't really helped much um, because the train's been so harsh um, and we've got to climb bloody sandy mountains. I, the wind's annoying, it blows sand in your eyes, but it's actually keeping us slightly cooler. Insanely harsh conditions, but I do feel a lot like Tintin right now, walking across the desert. It's like every kid's like cartoon uh, that you've ever like seen. This is, this is an adventure. I mean, we're walking across deserts. One more section done. Give me some skin. It's 11 o'clock, so we can have a couple hours off. Oh, and then like slowly do that 10K if we're feeling up to it after lunch and hopefully we can get to some water. And the great thing about that is, then we can have as much water as we like, also wash ourselves, cool ourselves down. So it really is like a carrot on a stick, um, you know, having that extra, having a water source at the end of a stretch, isn't it? Yeah. Anyway, lunchtime. How good is that? So good. So good. Mm -hmm. It's just like these sachets mm. in water. The water's warm. The sachet, like, in normal day life is probably, like, not even that good, mm -mm. Like, is it? It's just, like, very crap, really, isn't it? I mean, the first time we had it, we didn't actually like it. No, we didn't like it. But it's so now good Now we're right like, now. oh. The lid's here. Oh my it's god, that's so good. And it's, like, warm. It's like tea, almost. Yeah, that's Absolutely amazing. Uh -huh. This is a lime I've accidentally been carrying around in my bag for the last two weeks. <laughs> They're lemon trees. Yeah, do you want to get with a lime, I think? They're green. That we pilfered from that uh, farm. Sorry, farmer. <laughs> but, you know, I'm grateful for it. Is pilfered the right word? Stole? No, stole's a big word, isn't it? <laughs> it took. Stole's a big word. Hard. <laughs> <laughs> I think like everyone of my generation, you call your mum when you're not sure if you can still eat something. Mum, I've been carrying this cheese in my bag in the 32, potentially higher uh, weather for the last five days, four days? Mm -hmm. And I only opened it two days ago. Is it still edible? It's molten. It smells okay. Can I eat it? <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> I think probably not, but we're going to anyway. Okay, that's what I thought. <laughs> this is what Amy has to do to whilst I put the stuff on them, because there are so many flies. And now we've realised our bread is mouldy. Do you see that there? Mould, people. Mm. Mould. The bread has gone mouldy. Which means no more bread. Which means I don't need to carry it anymore, because I, can, I reckon I can just leave this here. It's, yeah. just, it's just bread, isn't it? Obviously, we'll take the plastic. Yeah, we'll take the plastic with us, of course, but I'm sure some coyote will be very happy about that. Enjoying yours? Mm. Aren't you glad we did this? You have a hummus all over your face. Have I got hummus over my face? <laughs> I'm in a desert, man. I don't care. <laughs> I'm talking my mouth full as well. I know. I've gone full caveman. One of the things I've learned about Amy is that she can sleep anywhere with like her legs out. She can be covered in flies and it not bother her. I yeah, had to put, a there's a rock underneath her. I had to put trousers on, socks on, and then 
cover my whole face, ears, everything. I'm sitting on my butt pad under here. My butt pad. That's underneath my back, all spread out. I've got my head on an moldy bread as a bit as a bread pillar. She can sleep anywhere. And we're currently sleeping underneath an acacia bush. There, we had to crawl under here. These are really, really sharp. Not a bad spot for a little nap under a tree. So this, viewers, is the most dangerous section for flash flooding. And I think we'll be going through sections of the canyon where it's just rock on each side. So that's why it's dangerous to us because we can't find it way out. Yeah. We can't obviously climb up. The idea is it suddenly starts flash flooding and you have to try and find a way up there. But it's oh. absolutely boiling hot, I okay. guess. The plan now is just to walk for three Ks, have another little cool down, and just keep doing that until we reach the Yeah, end so spot. rest every three K until we do this 11, basically. Yeah. yeah. Hopefully have some water in this pool. And if, even if you don't, it means it's only 15K tomorrow. Yeah. Whereas a 26K day is just a real pain in the ass. Even though technically that'll make today a 25K day. So just to update you, we did five kilometers in an hour because the train looks like this. So it's flat and hard sand, which just makes it so fast for us to move. It's baking hot, Amy's like, on the verge of heat exhaustion when we stopped halfway but her like eyes were like really dark red but she's cooled down but we're just keeping up the pace now because i think because we're on the final stretch we took half an hour just then to cool off in some shade have some more water smash out the next 5k yeah you definitely wouldn't want to get caught in here in a flash flood Good thing it's not cloudy. It's gotten so cloudy in the last half an hour. Oh dear. I nearly got heat exhaustion earlier. I started getting dizzy. Amy's getting the same thing. Her eyes are kind of jumpy. My eyes are kind of jumpy. A bit sort of shaky. Yeah. It's just extreme heat, but we're actually we're very grateful therefore for the clouds. Someone's watching over us. Look at this viewers, the whole of that river goes down to this much. This gets this narrow. That gives you a feel for how flooded this canyon must get. That whole massive wide river. Look at this. Crazy. Look how this got us excited. Like, it started like this. We were like, oh my God, it's looking like water. Sign, oh, it's flowing. Oh my God, it's flowing water. <laughs> like that, honestly, we can, we, th this is enough. We can drink. We can get water from this now. We don't need anything extra. But let's see, oh, a puddle. Oh, yay. yes. I can't believe that is something we're celebrating. <laughs> oh, <laughs> flowing water. Oh, listen to the trickle. The I sound. There's actually water over there. Oh, yes. It was so not hopeful because walking on that river today, we've not seen any water. Oh. <laughs> not seen any water whatsoever. Yeah, I'm fine. It got a bit dry around here. But there were those pools over there. As we're walking past, the Garmin said the uh, water source is right here. And I was thinking, well, I wonder what's in there. So we had a little wonder, even though we're knackered. And this is what I love about doing this. You just find these secret spots, these oasis. These are fig trees. Someone's obviously taken the time to plant these because they're all fruiting trees. Literally in the middle of dry riverbed, there's a little oasis. Look at this, it's all suddenly fruiting trees. So magical. None of them are ripe though, which is really annoying. It's so beautiful in here. There's this. 
it smells like mint everywhere. And then, keep going round. And this is this. Look at that. It's not the cleanest looking. So I think we'll just like wash ourselves with our hands back there. But yeah, what a find. Yesterday we said the lesson was not to walk in the sun and then we did it anyway. <laughs> the reason why we did it today is because there was water. Yeah, there was water <clears throat> here, we, we thought, and it turned out there was. It was 26.7 kilometers we did today. Mm -hmm. We were up at 3.30 and we didn't finish till like, what, six? Five? Five. So it was a bloody long day. <laughs> See you in the morning. sleeping in the riverbed. The worry they might come up the hill, not see us and just trample on us. We're kind of in the main path of the hill. The thing is it's half two so we've got hours until sunrise. They are the biggest camels I've ever seen. <laughs> they all serve at the same time. They're much jumpier than I thought they would be. It's a good thing that we waited until the morning to get moving because they just immediately started running. They were just running just from a few sounds that Amy made in the ten. Donkeys no more, don't give a shit about us. How did we get so surrounded by animals? <laughs> that was terrifying because I was just really worried they were gonna they were gonna sit here and they, they could easily just come up here and our tent it looks like a rock and they could have just walk straight across us. Here are the miscreants. See if we can get close to them. I've brought my stick so if they get too close <laughs> I can poke I can poke them like eh, eh. get rid of them. Yeah you kept us awake last night, didn't you boys? Or girls. I tell you what, they're incredibly noisy animals. Their stomachs make gurgling noises and they're constantly chewing. I think that's what you can hear. I could hear them. I thought they were walking, but I think they're just constantly chewing. Hello, donkey. Good morning. Ah, cute. You guys seem to be following them. Oh, look at that. For sake. Oh, come on, man. There's not many times you can say that you're camping 40, 40, 40, 50 meters from a bunch of camels. Breakfast this morning. Jam on biscuits, baby. Mmm. In there's where we haven't got that water that was in that secret little oasis. The donkeys are here and the camels are here, so I think it's fair to say that they definitely go around as adorable little pack. I love that, don't you? Yeah, it's so yeah. cute. It's so funny because we're about a kilometre from camp now and uh, you can see their footprints. So as we were sleeping last night, little did we know there was like four camels slowly walking through the night following Oh yeah, is this the bigger one? Yeah. <laughs> Size comparison. Following the river, just slowly lumbering through the night to, directly towards us. <laughs> Quite funny. One of the things that's so cool about this is the way the water, you can sort of imagine the way it, it sort of snakes its way along. Come on, Root. 
They're a lot larger than horses. In fact, I read somewhere that they can carry something like a third more than a horse, which equates to something like a couple hundred kilograms more than a horse. So we've just come out of the canyon down there. It's pretty cool. It's very like flat and desert like now. So update, we decided to just walk 10 kilometers across a desert with whatever water we had. <laughs> and uh, to be fair, it's only to 10k and we already had like four liters, so we're all right. So then we, it's flat. yeah, it's super flat. So then we stopped just by this road and we were just underneath one of these pylons, yeah, posts. And we just stopped in the shade and some guy just pulled over and gave us some water. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, we're just on the last six kilometers now across the desert. Not a lot out here, except lots of shaped cactus. Here's your way, it's so easy. We have a way mark here of the mountain, but it's, it's so foggy that we can't see it. Yeah. Yeah, we're trying to head towards a point on the horizon is what Eddie's describing. And when we first saw those camels, you'll remember in the desert near the Red, the Dead Sea, it went right the way around them. We weren't sure how to behave around them. It's funny how used to things you get. Now we see camels and we're like, eh, camels. And basically just walk straight past them. We're basically Jordanians now. Call me Abu Barnes. We keep getting over every hill and the village just doesn't appear. There's all power lines over here, so I'm hoping there's some buildings. Yeah. In a second. Aha. Bit of life down here now. Okay. Oh. Ah. Oh. oh, it's actually big. That's so weird out here. That's so weird. Over one hill. There's a little patch of green. Over there. one hill, this is what you get. basically just like a motorway, almost like a motorway stop town, if you will. But it's amazing they live in this little village and above they have this view. It's like a village with a backdrop to the mountains, it's amazing. So we just pulled in to one of these little like truck stop shops. But it's got everything we need by the looks of things. It's quite big. It's so hot in this country that they put all their chocolate in a fridge to stop it from melting. Chicken. Okay, thank you, sir. Such a deserved ice cream. What do you think? Yeah, this is a really weird place. It's obviously on the truck stop from Akabar North. I'm trying to get their truck started. Not the newest truck. <laughs> have I got stuff on my face again, Amy? Really? Have I? Have I? There wasn't a lot to eat in terms of lunch uh, in that place. So I've actually gone and got myself milk and cereal. And I'm going to sit at this truck stop in Jordan and eat milk and cereal in this like cafe area. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be a bit of a strange experience. They probably think we're crazy Western people, and they're right. I just said to Amy, they're Jordanian, and obviously we're from the West. So they're like, oh, they're just doing normal Western stuff over there. Little do they know that eating cereal in 35 degree heat at a truck stop is still considered mental where we're from. <laughs> But how are you enjoying it? We, to be fair, we could have made tuna wraps, but if you've been watching any of our videos, you'll understand why we've not done that. <laughs> and that was fun, we had a bit of lunch, filled up our water, bought a little bit more junk food as always, bit of tuna, bit of hummus, the standard stuff. Now we're crossing the road. And basically, just walking straight past this village and into the desert again. Obviously, a lot of people just pass through here to fill up and grab some snacks. I think 
think it's called the Desert Highway. <laughs> One of those places that you could sit there and just have a coffee and watch the world go by and I feel like you can learn so much by just watching the everyday sometimes. Anyway, onwards. That seems to be my catchphrase. I don't realize how much I say onwards until I start doing this. Onwards! <laughs> That's the lamest, cutest thing I've ever seen. Look at her trying to be supportive. I was like, Amy, give me an onwards. <laughs> Very mature, Amy. He does seem to be struggling to walk a little bit with that thing around his ankles. Oh, I feel so bad for him. Yeah. Out here, people are actually like attempting to grow something. You've got to hand it to them. They're giving it a go. And perhaps they're planting a new season or something, I don't know, but... Wow, what a place to try and grow something. Whoa. Whoa! Look at this! We're in the desert now! <laughs> Babe, where the f are we? I don't know. <laughs> what what are we doing here whose idea was this <laughs> this is so insane we're just walking across a desert so we just come from way out there in fact I, you can just about see there's one that sticks out up there although they all stick out uh, and that was about 12k from the village where we had the cereal at the truck stop and then we got here to this arch and all these tourists were in trucks running past and now we've arrived at a little tent and obviously during the day all the tourists come here they get photos at the arch and then this gentleman and his son give you tea um, and they've just kindly offered oh if you want to stay in this tent tonight you're more than welcome giving us some nice sugary tea um, which we're enjoying very much and he's obviously doing it here on the fire <laughs> on the fire with the ooh, kettle and yeah very welcome any liquid we can get an absolute carrot carry is always very welcome even whilst we're here there's a group of people these guys Filming for location for a film, looking for locations, making a documentary to get funding to shoot a film out here. And they're all currently dressing like uh, Jedi Knights in the desert. But look at this view, man. It's absolutely stunning. Like and subscribe. <laughs>